Today's he's never gonna make it under two minutes, two minute Tuesday is gonna be about edge profile bits. Uh, this is a special one because it's the first time we get to use our high speed footage that we shot a couple weeks ago. So there's gonna be some 19,000 frames per second shots in this video that are gonna blow your mind. Uh, it's normally where we'd run an intro, but uh, we finished it and unfortunately the hard drive got corrupted. We're not sure how, so we should have that redone pretty soon. Today's sponsored by Bits and Bits. There's a 15% off discount code down below in the pinned comment and description. My absolute favorite place to buy bits. Uh, they've supported the channel for almost two years now. Small family owned business. Paul answers the phone. He's the man. And we have these awesome Astro coated bits that last two to four times longer. Highly recommend guys, seriously. Let's bring it into the bench and throw way more than two minutes on the clock. We'll put two minutes, but we're not gonna make it. So let's come on in here and let me show you what I'm talking about. So edge profile bits are exactly that. They are for profiling your edges. You can see there's a profiled edge here. We use this eighth inch roundover. That's my most used bit. Roundovers, of course, are my most used along with chamfer bits. So these cut at a 45 degree angle. These do a roundover of varying sizes. This is an eighth of an inch, this is one inch. And then rabbiting bits are another ones I use. This is a 3 8 inch rabbit. And then this is a cool set that Bits and Bits sells that allows you to put different bearings on there so you can change the size of the rabbit. This is also a more, this is in the common side, but not quite as common. This is an OGE bit, which has this kind of zigzag S curve shape to it, which is really cool. I'll show you here in a minute what that looks like. These are most common bits. I certainly would recommend having an eighth inch roundover, a quarter inch roundover, and a good chamfer bit. The thing about chamfer bits is you control how much chamfer you do by raising or lowering your router. So, you know, something like this is gonna cover 99% of your needs. Um, these are great. I like them when they're smaller because something this big, you actually have to slow down your router because that's so much mass to move. Um, but there's really only a couple things you need to know about roundover bits. Okay, so uh, let's maybe say three things instead of a couple things. But first is setup. So we're going to talk about how much of a cut to take here in a second. But if you were doing your final pass, let's say you were taking all of this, you want to set it so that you could take something like a ruler and you could do this on the bottom of your router or on your router table you wanna take a ruler and you wanna go until that bit's not hitting. So you can see here, it's hitting that very corner. Now, some people do like to put that corner in there. It gives like a little bit more of a OGE look. God, I hope I'm not saying that wrong. You guys will blast me in the comments. But you wanna go until it just slips past that corner. So, oops, going the wrong way. So you can see, oh, there it goes. It just goes past that corner. It's not gonna hit and that's how you're gonna take your final pass. If you're using a router table and you wanna set up a fence, this is extra easy. Cause you can just pull your fence in like this and take a flat ruler just until you hit your bearing, just like that. And then you can tighten your fence down and then now you have the support of your fence when you're doing that. Now that's kind of a massive pass on this bit. I certainly wouldn't do that all at once and you don't have to with edge profile bits because they're always gonna cut more. So what I would do here is I would lower this maybe to about halfway through the curve. I would take one pass, you would do all your corners on your project that you want this same round over, and then you would lift it up to do it with your ruler where you set it just like that. All right, and the last thing to know, and the absolute most important, is the order at which you want to do your edges. Now, in a board, obviously you have long grain and you have end grain. And what happens is when you go around the long grain, you have no chance of getting tear out. So there's an important order at which you edge profile. Now you always wanna do your end grain first because what's gonna happen when you do your end grain, whether you've already done your long grain or not, is you're gonna get tear out. It's gonna come off the edge and it's gonna break your piece. And now that's a pretty extreme example, but it's not a maybe, it's a definite. It is going to happen when you're edge profiling. The older and less sharp your bit is, the more it's going to happen. So the way you combat this is you do end grain first and you're gonna get tear out, but that tear out is never going to be below, or I guess in this case, it's never gonna be above when you do your long grain. So you do your end grain, most of the time you're gonna get a little tear out here at the end, and then when you do your long grain, it cleans it up because where the bit was cutting is at the same depth, so it never would have tore out above that line because there's no forces on it. Now I know that can be kind of confusing, so let's look at this in high speed. All right, so here we have some footage we shot on the Avid CNC because we were able to get a much better angle on it, but this is the Bits Bits 3 8 inch Astro coated roundover bit. And you can see here, I mean, not only is this shot just absolutely incredible, but 
right at the end, you can start to see some tear out and you can see it right here in the corner. Uh, and this is tear out from the saw here, but as it comes off, you can see where tear out happens. Now, the problem we had is these bits were brand new and the Astro coated bits take forever before they get dull. So the results weren't as dramatic as you're about to see on the router table here when we show you the regular speed. But as it comes off, it creates a little tear out here at the end. So as you can see, the way we fix that is we start sort of on the end grain side we already cut and you can see that tear out right here. Uh, and then you just wrap around the edge, which completely cleans that up. Now, let me show you the chamfer bit in this high speed footage, which was much more dramatic. So you can see the chamfer bit. Now, again, this was the first time I've used this bit and this is the same bit we're about to use here in fast speed, we get a little bit more of a dramatic result, but look at this thing. I mean, this footage, <laughs> it just, let's take a second and enjoy this. This is absolutely incredible. But now you can see here at the end that we start to get a little tear out and you can see it start to forming here and then you get tear out. And again, same thing, the way you clean that up is you start on the edge and you can actually see right when it starts, you even get a little bit more tear out before the bearing completely touches the board. You can see some tear out right here uh, at the top of the piece, uh, but very simply because it is the same height that you cut on the end grain, you just go and it completely cleans it up. So now that you've seen this in slow speed, let's look at it at high speed or regular speed. It's actually at 60p, so it's slowed down about 2.3 times. Uh, and you can see here, when I do the end grain, we get a pretty significant tear out, but that doesn't go below the depth the bit is gonna cut on the long grain. So when we go over here and we start cutting the long grain, again, starting slightly on the end grain and wrapping around that corner, we're gonna get a perfect cut all the way through. Now, I, for some reason, picked the side of this board that had a saw mark in it, but uh, that has nothing to do with this. If this was a finished piece that you were putting an edge profile on, this obviously would be a very, very clean edge. Uh, but that is the most important part of edge profiling. So those are the basics of edge profiling. It's actually really easy. That bearing makes life easy. Just remember, you don't have to take a full bite the first time and which direction to go, and you're gonna be really successful. I know that there is nothing more frustrating than when you are edge profiling a project that's almost done and you get tear out or something like that. That is infuriating. Oh, I didn't quite get that word, but you know what I meant. So hopefully I kept this. I didn't keep it under two minutes. Who are we kidding? If you want to see a playlist of all the high speed footage we've done, it's up here in the corner. Thank you to Bits and Bits, longtime supporter, family run business. Give them, give them a click, guys. They are amazing. If you want to support the channel or pick up one of these new Katz Moses aprons, head over to the Katz Moses store. Stay safe in the shop. Have a wonderful day.